Living in an apartment, not having babies, don't even have a dog. Had a plant I killed. Got plastic plants. Welcome to the Kitchen and Jorn Show. I am Just Kitchen. Jorn is actually not here because today we are doing a special kitchen video. You can handle just me for a while. It's gonna be okay. That's right. It's the video you've been asking me to do for years and years and years. I am going to answer your plus size fashion questions. I asked all of you in the community tab to ask me some of your plus size fashion questions. And you did. You asked a lot of them. And I got very overwhelmed and then didn't make this video until now. I was scared. Cause here's the thing, plus size fashion is like the third rail, honestly. I'm laying myself out bare here. Before we get started, I want to give you some friendly reminders and caveats. Caveat one. Plus size fashion is very, very subjective. Just because I like something doesn't mean you're gonna like something. I'm basically going to answer these questions as if you were a friend of mine who was just asking my opinion on things. If I give an answer to a question you don't like, I don't, I don't know, go ask someone else. I am five foot three, 270 ish pounds. I am an hourglass from the front and an apple from the side. No, I don't understand it either. My stomach like is like a pyramid. Caveat too, I am not being paid by anyone to make this video. However, just for like disclosure purposes, like I have done brand deals with some of the brands I'll talk about in the past. I've done deals with Loft, Target, Torrid, Savage Fenty. I think that's it. If I missed one, I'm sorry, life is long. Also, I don't know if you guys know how brand deals work. I'm gonna let you in under the curtain. Yeah. When brands do deals with you, they pay for specific pieces of content as laid out in a contract. A brand can't like just buy you off. I mean, they can, but it's very expensive. I mean, if anyone wants to buy me off, like, you know, I have student loans, I'm available. Just cause somebody did a brand deal with something like a while ago, you're not being paid for content in perpetuity. Caveat three, I have sensory issues when it comes to both fit and texture. What that means practically is that I tend to be loyal to like brands that are specific and in some cases expensive. Anyway, I think I've said all the things that will keep people from yelling at me. So let's answer some questions. What makes me feel confident? This is by far the question I am asked most. So I'm gonna tell you a secret. I am not confident at all, not even a little bit. There are some people who really genuinely feel confident. Like there are some people who are like, I am so hot. I am so hot, yes, do, 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 do. And I am not that person. For every photo you see me take, there are 400 that did not make it to the gram. There are 400 of me being like, eh, or like, ooh, or like, eh. I know that I am not everyone's cup of tea. I know that people don't like me. I know that people don't think I'm attractive. I just do things anyway. Next question. What's some advice that you would give to a person who doesn't like the way they look? Well, let's break it down. Why don't you like the way you look? Is it because you personally don't like the way you look? Or is it because society is telling you a bunch of lies? that are based in anti-fatness, and in some cases racism, and in a lot of cases classism, homophobia. Uh, <laughs> you wanna operate at like the height of your powers, and that means doing the things that make you feel happy. Do you like watching the baking show on the television? Then you are at the height of your powers, baby. If dressing a certain way makes you feel happy, then you are at the height of your powers. What are some tips for stepping outside your comfort zone? I have one practical tip for this. Do the things you do normally, plus one additional thing. You don't need to do eight things at once. Eight's a high number. Do you wanna try wearing crop tops? Wear things you would normally wear plus a crop top. Wear a sweater over the crop top. You can take the sweater off, you can put the sweater on. How do you figure out your style versus what fits? Okay, this is a good question. I think the clothes should work for you. You don't work for them. You are the, the boss of these guys. They are your workers. If you aren't sure what your style is, 
then that means you haven't found it yet. That means you need to try different prints, different textures, different cuts. I think it's okay to, to buy things because they look beautiful and you aren't necessarily sure if they are going to be beautiful on you. Because if they look beautiful, they will look beautiful on you. Like sometimes people will look at things and be like, gorgeous, but not for me. And it's like, why not? If you think it's gorgeous, congratulations, someone made it for you. What are some misconceptions about things that fat people should or should not wear? Watch any movie from the early 90s and then like look at like the characters that are being like made fun of who are fat. That's what people think fat people should wear. I think that we've kind of reached a point where like it's more socially acceptable to show visible belly line, uh, cleavage, uh, ass cheeks. You can wear anything. You can wear anything. First person to ever pioneer this, I believe, is Gabby Gregg, AKA Gabby Fresh. She introduced the idea that like, clothes can fit you how you want them to fit. They don't need to fit the way they're, you know, prescribed to fit. Like for example, a jacket doesn't need to close all the way. It could be a vest, who cares? Also, this question implies that like, there are some myths about what women should wear and shouldn't wear that are like true, and there aren't. There is no amount of clothing on your body that will make you be a better or worse person, period. Should you hide visible belly rolls? No, next question. Is it bad to hold onto things you don't feel comfortable in? That's a great question, yes. I am a hoarder, I hold on to everything. It is really hard for me to get rid of things that don't fit me anymore, especially if they're very sentimental or I got them in a cool place. I.e., during the pandemic, I gained a lot of weight. A lot of the stuff I bought for empty suitcase just fully doesn't fit me anymore and it is a bummer. Cause a lot of that stuff I loved and I had to kind of mourn that and sort of accept that my body had changed. But what that meant is that someone else can enjoy those clothes now. What I'm saying is, is that by you giving up the stuff that no longer makes you happy, you are making the world a better place for other plus size people. Where do I find my clothes? Wow, what a great question. The answer is all over the place. <laughs> I know that's not the answer that you want, so I'm gonna be a little bit more specific. Fancy, beautiful, glamour. It's probably from Eloquy or it's thrifted. Practical, not itchy, helps me get through the day. It's probably torrid. Like a lot of the clothes I have, I have through empty suitcase. So I got them at like two big blondes in Seattle. Curvy consciousness in Philly. This is mostly torrid, Eloquy, ASOS. Unique vintage. There's some L.L. Bean in here. Do I have any sustainable clothing store recommendations? Thrifting. I think thrifting is really the best way to be sustainable because you're literally keeping something out of the dump. There is uh, a place here called the Plus Bus. I know them. Hi guys. And I know also a lot of them do online sales. How did I find my own personal style? <sighs> I know it sounds wacky doing videos. <laughs> It's because I did a lot of try videos. It was like, try this. And it's like, okay. And then sometimes it was like, I like it. And sometimes it'd be like, I don't like it. <laughs> Is it hot? Am I proud to serve it? And now I like to wear things that are like, that pop a little bit more. I wear yellow a lot. If you're looking at a picture of yourself, what do you like about how you're projecting yourself into the world? Do you have any tips for determining accurate sizing when ordering online? Yes, measure yourself with a tape measure and then have someone else measure you again. Make sure you do that pretty regularly, especially up here, because this is gonna change a lot. Also, when you're measuring your waist, make sure that you are not sucking it in. Caveat, if you have a history of eating disorders, do not do that. <laughs> have someone measure you and then have them like not tell you. My favorite tights. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I don't really wear tights. <laughs> I like the ones at Yours Clothing, those were pretty good. I like the ones at Torrid. I like the ones at Loft. My favorite swimsuits. The swimsuits, I only wear Torrid swimsuits. <laughs> Honestly, every year I'm just like, please let the Torrid swimsuits not be ugly. <laughs> the one I got this year was pretty cute though. Should I put it on? I'll put it on, why not? All right, I'm back. Full disclosure, I was gifted this bathing suit, but I was gifted it because I love it. <laughs> Some cons first. It is very hard to get on. <laughs> it usually requires a second person because like this part, you are like in. For some reason, the strap is sewn here, but like is detachable in the back. The pros, honestly, everything else. <laughs> I love this bathing suit. I love these little cutouts. I like I just, I like the pattern. I like how much my boobs are held up. I'm not being paid to say this. What's my favorite lingerie? Okay, so I have two answers for this. I wear Sculptress panties 
or ARC panties. They're honestly just like really big granny panties. They're like, that stretch right and feel right and have good coverage and stay up. That's like my favorite like workaday panty. I'm kind of mad toward underwear, honestly. I think that they make cute underwear that I will deploy for specific seduction situations because they're gonna come off quickly anyway. I'm sorry, I know my panties are expensive. I've owned a lot of panties that I've hated that were cheaper. So it was like, let's just buy 10 pairs of underwear that I actually really like and then take really good care of them. Where do I find basics? <laughs> it's Torrid because Torrid has like a super soft fabric. It's called their super soft fabric that doesn't itch. I have very specific sensory needs. I'm very picky about the things that I like. A place that also does great basics, universal standard. Where do I get my jeans? The answer, it's Torrid. <laughs> I'm really sorry. It's literally one specific torrid jean. The sky high skinny premium stretch. The rise is super, super high. They're really, really, really high waisted. And also the waistband is a little bit stretchy. This is the only pair of jeans I think I've ever put on my body where I was like, okay, because we all know me, I don't like jeans. Are there any thrift stores that you would recommend? Yes, we will put links to them in the description box. Next, what are things I look for in plus size clothing? A few things actually. Is it something I'm just gonna be wearing like just around? I wanna feel pulled together, but also comfortable texturally. Is it something I'm gonna be wearing out? I wanna have like a nice pop of color or a fun silhouette or something with drama. I love drama. I mean, as you know, I'm standing here in a bathing suit. I love drama. Oh, I have an idea. Let me show you something. Sometimes you can take like really, really easy breezy pieces and stick them together. Like this is actually part of a suit, but it's like a fun little oversized blazer. I got this from Eloquy. This is from Additionnel. And this is just a pencil skirt that has like a pleather front. Let me show you. I really wouldn't wear a bathing suit with this, but it kind of works. So like, we'll just keep it on, whatever. Which is kind of honestly how sometimes outfits come together. So what we're kind of doing here is we're sort of playing with proportion. So like we've got like, this little thing where it's like sort of like tight to my body, plus this hits me at the halfway point. Plus we have this big oversized blazer. I like to look for pieces that are interesting and sort of go together. I physically take up space, so I want to psychically take up space. And the way that you do that is by wearing, you know, big pieces. I think like a person who's really good at this is Jasmine. Of course, I'm just like, hi, I'm your little sidekick. How do you deal with sizes being different in different stores? Measure your body with a tape measure. Every time, next. If I could ask a company to make changes to include plus size people, what changes would I recommend? Have a variety of fit models. People have fat on like their legs, they have fat on their arms, they have fat in their tits, in their ass, in their thighs, in their calves, in their feet. People have fat feet, I have fat feet. I think one of the bigger mistakes that people think is that like all jewelry is just like any size. Not true, jewelry has to be plus size too because I have a fatter neck. Like people will buy me necklaces and I'm like, that's cute. <laughs> Are, there any <laughs> Are there any chain stores you'd recommend besides Torrid? Yes, yes. I think Eloquy does a really good job of making drama feel psychologically accessible to people. It's like if I was going to the Hamptons, but I'm like a fat person, I think Universal Standard does a great job at like really elegant, really wearable basics. I also really like ASOS. I think Unique Vintage does really cool evening wear. Like this little velvet dress, little holiday dress I bought last year because I was sad. And I was like, hmm, I'll just wear a holiday dress by myself. It's comfortable. I feel cute in this and I don't feel overwhelmed. I love this dress, but I only wear it in Vegas because it has two leg slits. The dress has a tongue. How do you find age appropriate clothing that doesn't make you feel like a grandma? Everything is age appropriate. What you're actually asking me is how can I sort of like dress my body in a way where I feel powerful in the body that I have? And the answer to that is don't give in to the tent. You're not spraying for bugs. You don't need to just throw a whole sheet over your body and abandon ship for three days. If you want to wear stuff that feels age appropriate, but it's not like a grandma, and I interpret that to mean that you wanna cover more stuff, make sure that you wear stuff that fits close to your body and that you're wearing colors. Don't give in to like being like, well, I just gotta wear all black forever. Unless you wanna wear all black forever. How do you find structured pieces that fit you right? Oh, my sweet summer child. This is a trial and error. You're gonna find that some stores work for you and some stores don't. 
and often that will be because of the type of fit models that they employ. And this is, I realize, you know, if you have money, a tailoring. Off the rack clothes are almost never gonna fit well to your body automatically. And the clothes that you see online or in catalogs or whatever are usually like cinched or tailored or made to look a certain way so that you will buy them. How do I plan shopping trips when I know I might get triggered? Well, first of all, I almost never shop in stores. I shop almost exclusively online and it's for the reason that if I ever I get overwhelmed, I'm in my home. Practical advice though, if you must go into a store, go into a store with a specific item in mind. Do not get distracted by other items. You are looking for one specific thing. If you do not buy that specific thing, leave. Going on a shopping trip and being like, I'm gonna buy clothes is just mm -mm, nonsense. How do you find clothing without spending a lot of money? You thrift, especially right now, because you know what's happening right now? A lot of people like me are like, uh-oh, I gained a size. Here goes all of my cute clothes into the beautiful thrifting environment and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Where do I find bras, Torrid? <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. Not all Torrid bras either. It's like one specific Torrid bra. Torrid plunge push-up bras. Where do I get strapless bras, Torrid? <laughs> Here are other places that make great bras. Wacol, Chantrell, Curvy Couture. Prima Donna makes great bras too. What are good places to find tall boots that fit over large calves? I believe this season Eloquy put out a boot collection. I know ASOS does. Oh, if you go to Zappos and just search for like wide width. Okay, someone said, I know there's lots of great online brands, but do you know any stores where you can try on before you buy? So there just aren't that many brick and mortar plus size stores anymore. I hate saying Torrid, it's just Torrid. You know about Torrid though. I know, I'm like everyone watching this is just like, I know about Torrid, Kristen, tell me other stuff. Eloquy has some brick and mortar stores. Lane Bryant still exists. I don't like Lane Bryant. I just don't. I, I think Lane Bryant has had like 20 years to really get their shit together and they haven't bothered. Also, oh, Old Navy has stuff in stores now. I wish there were more. There really aren't. Where can you find fun prints and bright colors? Eloquy and ASOS. <laughs> Fashion to figure also does cool stuff. How can you find decent dress pants? Whew. Dress pants are hard. I get my dress pants from Eloquy actually. I got these dress pants from Additionnel and I love them because like they're elastic in the waist, but they also have like this like tuxedo stripe. We're we'll talking about these specifically. These are like the Studio by Tori. These are the point pants. Um, these have like a really wide waistband. They look like dress pants. They just kind of fit like really close to your body. Any suggestions for petite plus size clothing? Well, I mean, all of the brands that I've suggested before work except for Eloquy. <laughs> Eloquy, you're gonna have to get everything hemmed like four inches. When I went abroad, did I find any difference in sizes compared to America? Yeah, it was harder. Like I was actually shocked at how hard it was in Europe. It was, it was shockingly hard. The sizes are more limited. How do I find arm coverage that isn't a wrap or a cardigan? Good news, right now there's a great trend called this, <laughs> where people are doing off the shoulder stuff, but like it's like a little like this. Also there are some that have like straps and then still do it off the shoulder. Also like why do you have to cover your arms? They're hot. Any suggestion for comfy and stylish shoes for people with wider feet? Go to places that make plus size clothes. Often they have like, you know, wider shoes. What online brands fit true to size? In my experience, I don't think any brands are true to size. I don't think true to size is a thing. What does that mean? Is there an international size setting standard? No. How do I feel about Old Navy's new size policies? Good, I think any move to make more sizes more accessible to more people is a good thing. What are the best shapewear brands? I don't wear shapewear. Not my problem, not my problem, it's not my problem, I don't wear. Yeah. How do you dress when you're not a natural hourglass? First of all, I think we need to break this question down. There is nothing wrong with not being a natural hourglass. Your body is the shape that it is. Body diversity is a thing that's real. The idea that like the hourglass is the only acceptable way to be fat is ridiculous. However, I think everyone has parts of their body and they like to show off. That's natural, that's cool. Do you like your butt? Wear tight stuff. Do you like your legs? Should, you know, have slits. What's the best dress shape for apple, pear, and rectangle bodies? The advice that people usually give for that is wear stuff that accentuates your waist. When we talk about fruit body shapes, what we're really talking about is what fruit do you wish you were not? It's like, are you an apple, but you hate it? Or are you a pear and it sucks? I think that that's like backwards thinking. You should be thinking about yourself in terms of like, what makes you feel good? What gives you power? What do you want to show off? 
How do you pick the best patterns for different figures? There are no best patterns for different figures. I know it seems like this is a simple thing, but I'm talking to you right now. There are no best patterns for different figures. That's a lie. What styles do you recommend if you don't want things to be too form-fitting or too loose? Okay, that's fine. I think that sometimes we wanna wear things that just sort of skate over the body. You wanna be a ski slope. So this is a dress I got in Greece at Matte Fashion. It's like a shirt dress. I don't think it's like that impressive on the hanger, but I think like when you wear it, it's like I'm in my 30s. And that means I'm really good at f***ing. <laughs> and also I don't button it all the way. So it has like a little slit in the front, moves a little bit more. What can I do to help muffin top? There's nothing wrong with muffin top. Personally, I think the tops are the most tasty part of the muffin, but that's just me and I'm gay. If for some reason you're trying to avoid it, stuff hits you your natural ways. So look for like high rise jeans, high rise skirts. How can you take an outfit to the next level and make it fashion? For this one, we're gonna bring in Brie. Brie, come here. It's free. Okay, so this is a dress that I got from Loft that like, it's just a white dress. It's just mm -hmm. fine. And then Brie got like this cute little like- Varsity jacket. Varsity collegiate sweater. And so I thought like, why don't we do like a cute little preppy look where it's like this like little white dress and like also this little varsity sweater. Thank you for being a model. Thank you. Thank you for being my model. You look cute. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yo, show a little bit more skin, add a little bit more jewelry, add a big pop of color, cool bag. What are some basic must-haves? It depends on what you feel the most comfortable in. If you like bopping around in something, get five of those things in different colors. One thing I like bopping around in is pencil skirts. You think this pattern would be too loud? Actually, I think it's cute and like it's like a little pop, it's fun, it's exciting. I have like a ton of skirts like this. I would say like, honestly, a bunch of tops that are like white or interchangeable or like sort of camis. I'm also a big dress person because a dress is a complete outfit. It's like how no is a complete sentence. Under boob sweat solutions. I wear push up bras, honestly. The best way to not get sweaty is to not have your boob touch your stomach in the first place. That said, uh, Lumi makes a great body deodorant. How do I do a comfy athleisure look? Great question. I'm gonna get naked. This is also answering the question about uh, how to wear flannel, uh, as well as a partial answer to how to do mask wear, which I feel like is gonna be its own video, honestly. This is kind of like my go-to athleisure look. This is like torrid long line sports bra, torrid bike shorts. And then this LL Bean flannel, which I have like four of. <laughs> It's playing with proportions. Like I have this big baggy shirt, but like it's also kind of streamlined under here. So I don't feel like I'm drowning. But as long as we're answering the question about mask wear, this is like one of my mask outfits. Let me show you another one. So it's like, eh, sleeveless hoodie, but it's also like still kind of glam. This is called putting on the Ritz. Hi, I just came from a uh, award ceremony or a uh, Vegas cabaret where I sang, would you like to have sex? <laughs> That's this look. Anyway, that's my plus size fashion questions video. There are tons more questions that I didn't answer, so we're gonna do a part two probably. Also, if you have more questions, please ask them in the comments. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye.